Statement of Cash Flows Problem 4. Carrot Company had the following events during the year. Performed services for $15,100 cash. Purchased land for $8,100 cash. Hired an accountant to keep the books. Received $41,000 cash from issuing common stock. Borrowed $10,200 cash from Radish Bank. Paid $5,100 cash for salaries expense. Sold land for $10,200 cash. Paid $4,100 cash on the loan from Radish Bank. Paid $5,300 cash for utilities expense. Paid a cash dividend of $2,100. Prepare indirect method statement of cash flows. Note that the beginning cash balance is $10,100. Indicate how each of the 10 above events affects the statement. Specifically, provide the operating, investing, and financing activities. We got a lot of work to do. We're going to get it done. Since we have to prepare the entire indirect method statement of cash flows, first thing we're going to do, go through all these transactions and classify whether it's on the operating, investing, or financing activities portion of the statement of cash flows, or it might not go on any portion. Let's start with A, perform services for $15,100 cash. Where is that going to go? That's going to be something that goes towards operating activities in terms of determining our net income. You can either be given net income, net loss, or the revenues or expenses of the financial statements. If you're given net income, net loss, just boom, use that number, makes it simple. If you're given the revenues and expenses, revenues, expenses, you're going to have to put those into the statement of cash flows. B, purchase land for $8,100 cash. That's going to be an investing activity because we're purchasing property, plant, equipment. So I'm going to put an IA. C, hire an accountant to keep the books. That's not going to be anything. No to any of those. D, receive $41,000 cash for issuing common stock. That's going to be a financing activity because we're dealing with the issuance of common stock. E, borrowed $10,200 cash from Radish Bank. That's going to be a financing activity because we have a long-term note there from borrowing from the bank. If it was a current liability, then it would be considered a um, operating activity. But if we're borrowing $10,200 from the bank, more likely that's considered long-term. So we're going to go ahead and put that as a financing activity. F, pay $5,100 cash for salary expense. That's going to be operating activity. Again, if we're given expenses or income, that's going to be on the operating because that goes into net income, net loss. G, sold land for $10,200 cash. That's going to be an investing activity because we are selling property, plant, and equipment. H, paid $4,100 cash on the loan from Radish Bank, which we saw above. And E, that's going to be a financing activity because we assumed it was financing back then. I pay $5,300 cash for utilities expense. That's going to be operating activities because, again, goes to net income, net loss. J, paid a cash dividend of $2,100. This is going to be a financing activity. We're also told that there's a beginning cash balance of $10,100. We're going to need that when we actually present the information on the statement of cash flows. Now the fun part. We get to put together the pieces of the puzzle and put this all into the statement of cash flows. I will tell you, glancing through this, the way that the information is presented, it's not that difficult. It could be given to you a lot more challenging. I'll explain as we go. Now, indirect method. Company uses the indirect method. Indirect method, we're going to show the operating activities, the net cash flow, then the net cash flow from um, investing activities, and then the net cash flow from financing activities in that order, and then we get the change. Then we take the um, the beginning balance, and that should equal our ending balance in cash. So let's go ahead and start with our cash flow from operating activities. So we'll put that at the top. So operating activities, and we're going to go ahead and put our different transactions. Now, because we're not presented with net income, net loss, we have to go through our revenues and expenses. We're looking for anything that has OA, so operating activities. So we have A, we have OA. We have uh, F, OA, and then we have I as OA, so three transactions. And they're all revenues and expenses. No current asset, current loss changes, no depreciation expense, no gains or losses. Those things all go on operating activities, just revenues and expenses. So I like to start with the revenues, just keeping it in the form of like an, an income statement, start with the revenues and then do the expenses. So the first thing we have, we have cash receipts. We perform services for $15,100 cash. Remember, we're doing a statement of cash flows. Cash inflows, increase cash. Cash outflows, decrease cash. So we have cash receipts. 
from revenue. Remember, inflows, outflows. Cash receipts from revenue, how much? It's going to be $15,100. $15,100. Okay, next. So we can go ahead and we can cross off A. We've just completed that. Go Now, F and I are both expenses. So we can go ahead and put those on there. So these are going to be cash payments. I'm just going to abbreviate cash pay for salary expense. And the amount is going to be $5,100. And that's going to be a in brackets or parentheses because it's a reduction. And we can cross that off. Let's go ahead and cross off F. All right, I pay $5,300 cash for utilities expense. So cash pay for utilities expense. And that's going to be $5,300. Those are all of our operating activities. We look elsewhere. There's nothing else. We can go ahead and put our net cash flow from operating activities. And while I'm writing that out, just remember what else goes in our operating activities. We have current assets, current liabilities, and all these items, net income, net loss, gains, losses. So the amount there is going to be positive 4700 So I like to do this in a subtotal total column. All right, so that's operating. So now we're going to the investing activities. So the investing activities, we're looking through anything that is an IA. And we have two transactions, B and G. So purchase land for $8,100 cash. And we have the sale of land. So I like to structure this in terms of the inflows and outflows. So a purchase is obviously an outflow and a sale is an inflow. So the sale of land for 10200 that's in G. Let's just go ahead and put that down. So we have cash sale on land and the amount is 10200 And we can cross off that transaction, which I already did. And then we have B, purchase land for $8,100 cash. So cash pay on land and that amount is 8100 we can calculate our net cash from investing activities and the idea here is that investing activities you're looking at purchases and sales from property plant and equipment so the amount there is a $2,100 positive change net cash flow from investing. And we've, cr we've finished all our investing activities. We can go ahead and cross off C, by the way, because that doesn't affect anything. Now we get down to the financing activities. That's usually where students have the most difficulty. By the way, with the investing activities, remember that any gains or losses on the sale go under operating activities. So with the financing activities, I like to start by putting the amount of cash received and then finishing with the amount of cash paid. So if we're issuing stock or we're borrowing money, that's going to increase cash. So the first thing we have is D, receive $41,000 cash from issuing common stock. So we have cash received from issuing, I'll just put issue stock, and that amount is $41,000. And then we go ahead and cross that off. And E, we borrowed money. We borrowed $10,200 from the bank. So cash received from loan, positive $10,200. And we can go ahead and cross that off. And we've only got two transactions left. Boom, look at that. Flo flying through this. Okay. So the next two, paid and paid. So we're paying cash. So in H... We have cash paid on loans. We're paying back the amount we owe. And that amount is 4100 And, of course, it's a reduction. So we reduce that. And then we have paid a dividend of 2100 So cash paid on dividend. 
and that amount is 2100. When we calculate all those things, we get our net cash flow from financing. Remember financing, we've got long-term liabilities. We've got all our stock. We've got our treasury stock, common stock, and we've got our dividends, which are usually the hardest for students. So $45,000 is the positive change there. All right, so we have all three. We then tally up all three, and we have our net increase or net decrease in cash. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring over the balances. So net increase or decrease. Here I'm going to tell you it's an, it's an increase because all three are positive in cash, but it could be a decrease. We add or subtract the numbers, and here we're going to get $51,800. So the net increase in cash here is uh, $51,800 plus we take the beginning balance, the beginning cash balance, which we're told is 10100 We add those two numbers together, and then we get our ending cash balance. And our ending cash balance is going to equal $61,900. And this is what we should be seeing on the, on the balance sheet. The beginning cash balance on the balance sheet should be 10,100. Our ending cash balance should be 61,900. And the purpose of the statement of cash flows is to show the change between those two numbers. So we can cross off our cash balance. We use that. We can already set, cross off how we indicated the 10 events. And we've gone through each of these. And this is what the indirect statement of cash flows is. Again, it's the operating activities, start operating, always operating at top, then investing activities, and then financing activities. Once you get all three of those, you then sum the numbers together. Could be positive, could be negative. You get your net increase or decrease in cash. You then add or subtract that from the beginning balance of cash, and you get your ending cash balance to show the change in the cash balance on the balance sheet.